And ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to beautiful Tiger Stadium as we are now here live with the National Anthem getting sent for tonight's competition. It is the Poplar Bluff Mules taking on the Cape Central Tigers in SEMO North competition. The Southeast Missouri High School Football Game of the Week is coming up next. gentlemen good evening welcome to right here at beautiful tiger stadium i'm alvin washington glad you could come along for tonight's competition tonight it's going to be a very important game for the cape central tigers to bounce back from a 31 14 loss at the hands of st charles west on the road meanwhile popular bluff coming off of an ugly 45 to 7 loss at the hands of farmington a game in which they lost Two of their front line linebackers, though being Luke Latteret, the senior, and junior, Darius Sales. Let's see what happens when Mark Barus brings his club into Tiger Stadium for the first time. Stay right here. We'll be talking to Nathan Norman of the Tigers in just a moment. You're watching beautiful Tigers football right here on the Southeast Missouri High School Game of the Week. This is MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we got your back. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Do I look like someone who is at risk for heart disease? Well, guess what? I am. Heart disease took my dad's life, but it doesn't have to take mine. Because 80% of cardiac events in women may be prevented if we make the right choices. 80%. You may not know you're at risk, but one woman dies every minute from this largely preventable disease. Help bring a voice to this silent killer. Speak up to save lives at GoRedForWomen.org. We're back here on Mid-America Sports covering Cape Central Tigers football. The Tigers getting set to take on the Poplar Bluff Mules in SEMO North Conference action. I'm Alvin Washington, and on the line with me from Cape Central High School, their first-year football coach, Nathan Norman. Coach, welcome back. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. 
A little bit of a roll bump for the Tigers last week. Uh, they got soundly defeated up in St. Charles at West High School. That final 31-14, to it was already 17 to nothing by the time the first half ended, and they really got slow out of the gate. Yeah, they did. They came out strong, played well early, and we were a little slow out of the gate, and those two combinations didn't work well for the Tigers. So we uh, have to put that one behind us and come out and play better tonight and hopefully uh, have a better outcome. Your impression of Kyle Anders, the quarterback for St. Charles West, from last year to this year? Play made it, made a great improvement. Um, I'll tell you, the biggest difference in them was their was their offensive line and defensive line play. They got much stronger and much uh, more. Uh, I don't know. They moved a lot better, and that's where they made their biggest improvement was their their line play. Bright spot of the game. You did get your first punt block for a touchdown this year, uh, and it, it at the time closed the gap to about seventeen to seven. Uh, you managed to get within 17-14, but then the next 14 points got ran off by St. Charles West. Of course, they're, they're the loss as it is. What have these sophomores and juniors this year learned about themselves in these first six weeks? Well, you know, out of the gate they got some confidence in themselves, and that was always nice. That was my biggest concern because these kids had never played before. Uh, so out of the gate they got some good confidence under their belt. And then uh, last week with a loss, you know, I, I was able to read that the uh, it, what I liked about it. If you take anything, you you can always learn from a loss. So, what we learned as coaches is that these kids do care and they, and they want to win and they do, they want to do well. Because you could tell after the game that that, that bothered them to lose, and, and that was a good sign. You know, I was glad to see that. I hate to lose, but you know, if you have to lose, at least you could see that our kids do care and they they uh, they didn't like it. So that was a good feeling. A short break. We'll come back and talk about tonight's opponent, the Poplar Bluff Mules, a team that Central made history on last year. Will the same thing spring eternal this time around? Stay here. We're talking with Coach Nathan Norman of Cape Central in this pregame show right here on Mid-America Sports. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand. And in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Back here on MidAmerica Sports, MABN.net. We're talking Cape Central Tigers football on this pregame show. Brought to you by Southeast Health at SEHealth.org. Southeast Health. The difference is in how you're treated. Alvin Washington with Coach Nathan Norman of Cape Central. And, Coach, you come into a contest where you've got a top ten running back and a top ten quarterback in the mix for the Poplar Bluff Mules under a brand-new coach. Uh, Austin Barus among the area leaders in uh, in rushing uh, just over 400 yards with a couple of touchdowns in his mix. Uh, on the flip side, uh, passing-wise, Mike Griggs, uh, is their is their main signal caller, uh, completing just under 50% of his passes. He has six touchdowns against two picks. That is through week five, by the way. And this team has taken their lumps uh, just like the the central is. Only the the record is different. Yeah, they uh, you know they're a much better team than what their record shows. They uh, they are a uh, a very quality football team, and they're. They're much improved from last year. They've got some good backs, and they, they play hard, and uh, it'll be a tough challenge for us. And you go into this game with the understanding that there's going to be a couple of players that are uh, going to be off of the sidelines for Pop Love due to uh, whatever extenuating circumstances happen back at school. Does that change the game plan a little bit, or are you just going to stay focused on what Central does best? Well, that's right. We're just going to try to focus on what Cape Central needs to do to be successful and uh, we got a long way to, to go to get to, to improve, and, and that's what we're working on this week. We're working on Cape Central and trying to do what we do and, and do it better than uh, we've done in the past. This is also a SEMO North Conference game, just your second of the year, having knocked off Jackson very closely 14-12 to back in week four. Uh, from here on out, the next two games are also SEMO North games. They're also class four districts. Class 5 District 1 games, I should say, 
uh, those being Farmington still at Tiger Stadium and then on the road on the 21st at Sykes to wrap up the Seymour North season and could potentially put you in line for yet another state playoff berth. How important are these conference games from here on out? Well, they're very important. You know, it's always uh, important when you're, you're playing a conference opponent. You always want to do well and play well, uh, get good bragging rights in your in your conference area. Um, plus, this is a big game for us. It sets the tone for us going into district play, and we need to come out and perform well and, and uh, get some confidence before we go into district play next week. Poplar Bluff is in the crosshairs of the Tigers, and we're glad to talk with the head Tiger as always, Coach Nathan Norman in his first year with the Black and Orange. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck this evening. Thank you. Stay right here. We've got more of our contest. Poplar Bluff taking on Cape Central. It's Southeast Missouri High School football on MidAmerica Sports, MABN.net. We're back here on Mid-America Sports covering Cape Central Tigers football. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid America Sports, MABN.net. There is a place. And ladies and gentlemen, as we do welcome you back here to Tiger Stadium in beautiful Cape Girona, Missouri. The Tigers just about set to take the field, and there they go. Tigers 4-1 and one on the year, having lost last week to St. Charles West in a tough one. That final being 31-14, as you heard on the coaches' show, just a little too slow out of the gate, and that's how everything happened. Meanwhile, for the... Poplar Bluff Mules, 45-7 to loss against the Farmington Knights, whom Cave Central will play next week at this ballpark. And they're having a bit of things going under their first-year head coach, Mark Barus. Barus's son is one of the leading rushers in the area, and that being Austin Barus. He just has over 400 yards rushing on the year. Also in the mix later this evening, we just want to remind you that we'll be keeping up to date with the St. Louis Cardinals, who are right now taking on the Philadelphia Phillies in Game 5 of the 2011 National League Divisional Series. That's a big game there. If the Cardinals win, it could be deja vu all of again. As you remember, last uh, five years ago, they were managed to win it all against the Detroit Tigers, who, oddly enough, are in the ALCS for the first time since that World Series trip in 2006. We'll take another break, and we'll come to the kickoff here at beautiful Central Tigers Stadium as the gentlemen are set to go for the coin toss. It is the Tigers taking on... The Poplar Bluff Mules, that comes your way after this timeout. You're watching Southeast Missouri High School Football on MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand. 
find in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid America Sports, MABN.net. Presented by Southeast Health. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back here at beautiful Tiger Stadium. Here in Central High School, Cape Girona, Missouri, the horn sounds and we're ready for football. And as a result of the opening toss, it will be the Central Tigers to receive the opening kick. Colton Manon will kick away for Poplar Bluff, you see there in the white. We're just about set to go. Glad you could come along for great football action here. And away we go. And the football is down. Who's got it? It is the Tigers. They will have the football at their 31-yard line. And the starting quarterback for your Cape Central Tigers is the senior, number eight, Christian Cavanis, 6'1", 175, currently on the season throwing 29 of 50 for 420 yards, five scores and four interceptions, 261 yards rushing, and four touchdowns. And that is a good-looking shot of that young man as we're set to go. If you want to converse with us throughout the game, game day at mabn.net. On the carry, this is Chris Martin. He will barely get the line of scrimmage if that second down as we do play 12-minute quarters mandated by the National Federation of High Schools. Martin was stopped on the play by number 10, Austin Goodrich, and the football goes nowhere. Second down. Thanks for coming along for great football action right here on Beautiful. MABN.net. Here we go. Second down. The football is at the 31 yard line. Back to pass. Here comes Cavanis. A lot of time is going to throw down field. It's caught. First down and more into Poplar Bluff territory. Great catch and run by Jacob Boerboom. But Borboom get himself in the mix of things. Borboom takes that all the way down to the Poplar Bluff. 44-yard line, first and 10. 
and an absolutely delicious looking throw by Christian Cavanis after having a lot of time in the backfield. There you see the Tigers there in their black uniforms with the orange trim. Man in motion. This is, looks like Alex Davis Carter, and I stand corrected. That's Jacob Campbell, who's been one of the hot players of the day. Campbell with the carry. That'll bring up second down. Campbell brought up to about the 42. If you remember the big game against Festus, Campbell had two touchdown catches and the game-winning kick block. The flip the football at about the 42. Second down, about a long eight. Campbell again on the carry to the outside. First down, more down the sideline. 30, 20, 10. Cuts back in. Still on his feet. He is out of bounds. They'll call him at the 19-yard line. Great looking run by Jake Campbell. It's a 23-yard gain. First and 10. A good looking run there. And that's indeed where they mark the football as we continue the road. The beautiful pigskin footage at beautiful Tiger Stadium. This is our fourth game at the facility, I believe. Actually, it's the third game. This is also homecoming night. Again, the wing tee set. A man in motion is Campbell. He'll get the call again. Nope, yep, it is Campbell. And Campbell... On the delayed handoff, maybe the line of scrimmage, if that, second down. Tackle on the play by big number 55, Chilkup Sliger, the six-foot sophomore. So Campbell will earn one yard on the play. Second and nine at that point, a red zone opportunity for the Tigers. The clock is running with 9.25 for the opening quarter. Good-looking crowd here for tonight's contest. Again, the wing T set. A man in motion is Campbell to the far side. Play action. This is Cavanaugh. He'll throw down field. He's got board. Boom again. Has a block. He stays on his feet. Trying to get to the end zone. Fumble on the play. And who's got it? It will stay Stay Boerboom. Wow. Oh, that was almost disaster. But Jacob Boerboom right there on the play. And he gets the first down inside to the three. Already two big plays by the younger brother of current New Mexico redshirt freshman and offensive lineman, Zach Boerboom. That's a 15-yard gain, and that's first and goal at the three. And already looking to smell blood is the Tigers. 8.50 for the quarter. Here we go. A man in motion. The handoff. This is Martin trying to slice through. Nothing there. Brings up second down. He may have gotten one out of the game. The football is up to the two-yard line. So a few different players getting a, a look here in this opening drive for Central. Football is at the two with 8.19 to go. Again, the wing T set with a slot to the far side. Here's Cavanaugh. He'll slice through. Touchdown, Tigers. That was easy pickings. Christian Cavanaugh will pick up his fifth rushing touchdown of the year on an absolutely solid-looking drive. That's quickly 6-0 there on the two-yard run by Cavanis. And now Ky it'll be Calvin Lovick, the junior, on for the extra point. Out of the hold of Cavanis, the right foot kicker. Ready to set it down. Awaiting the snap. Snap is down. Kick is up. And this one is good. 8-14 for the quarter and already looking solid for the kids from Mount Auburn Road. 7-0. This portion of tonight's contest is brought to you this evening by our great friends at Southeast Health. At Southeast Health, the difference is in how you're treated. 
Again, 7 nothing in favor of the Cape Central Tigers on a two-yard run by Christian Cavanis. Give the extra point to young Mr. Cal Calvin Lovig, and we've got ourselves a nice start here to this contest. And now let's see what the defense will do this time around. Good to see our great friends, our executive producer of the Sage, Eric Norman, his son, C.J. Norman, from Section 148 and the Jungle in the building. Has a woman here tonight who's a Cape Central grad, 100 years old. Right before the start of the contest, nice of Dr. Michael Cowan, the, the principal, to introduce the young lady. All right, here we go. Calvin Lovick and the kids in black and orange set to kick away here. And the rumbling from the crowd, and we're off. This ball will come to about the seven-yard line. I hit a steam and a good tackle. 8.08 to go. The run back that time by number 14, Kimbrell Miller. From his seven to about the 25, that's an 18 yard run back. First and 10 at that point, and let's introduce the starting quarterback for the Poplar Bluff Mules, a good looking young man himself. He is six foot senior Michael Griggs, 165 pounds, 556 yards, passing seven scores and three picks. And we've got a carry already on the play. 188-yard rushing also for Michael Griggs with three touchdowns. Looks like we got a flag on the field to kick this one off. And it looks like the penalty will be against the Poplar Bluff Mules. The call here is in legal motion. So that will push them back five. And Poplar Bluff under... First-year coach Mark Perus has had their problems. Hopefully they don't want to go too far down in the mix. So first and 15 at the 20-yard line for the Mules. On the shotgun, the handoff up the middle, moving and grooving, shaking and baking, and wrapped up for short gain. That might be Barus. The carry is 35. It says Cornelius Timothy, a 5'5 junior. And that'll bring up second down. Clock is running with 7'17 here for the opening quarter. The football is marked at the 24-yard line. So second and 11 at that point. Oh, that flag on the play. Flags are flying all over creation. Who did what? They'll call encroachment this time against Central. So five cheap ones back the other way. This will make it second and six. The football now at the 29-yard line. So for the first time tonight, Poplar Bluff inside the sticks. And we keep the beautiful pick skid for the trolling coming up to the seven-minute mark of the opening quarter. Again, if you just miss it, a two-yard run by Christian Cavan. This is the opening score of the game. A man in motion. Now on the handoff. Big hole up the middle. First down more. This is the the quarterback himself. No, this is Austin Barus. This is the man we were talking about. Barus breaks through right tackle and gets across to the Cape Central 48-yard line. Great-looking run by Barus. And that's first and ten. For Barus, that's a 23-yard game. And he darted through right tackle on that one. I want to say a special hello to my good friend, uh, Elliot Sterling, our coordinating producer, Fieldside. Tending to his son, who's a little bit under weather. We hope he does indeed get well. On the carry, the throw to the outside. A good gain on the play for Poplar Bluff. The catch made. Again by Kimbrell Miller, second down. Football is at the 44, second down. Clock is running under six, call it 5.57, and Poplar Bluff trying to answer back Cape Central's first drive of the night. 
They'll come up with and modified wing team, a man in motion. It's number 87, Darren Young. Hold it, flags are flying again. And I think this might be back on Poplar Bluff. It indeed is. It's false start. That'll bring up a second and 11. Four steps forward and about eight of them back for Poplar Bluff right now. Second and 11 at the Central 49, rolling the beautiful pigskin footage. As the mules come up to the line, they've got, again, the modified wing tee, double receivers to the far side. Handoff again. This should be Baruch breaking a tackle, but knocked down around the original 10-yard mark, and that'll bring up third down. What is this? Austin Baruch is a really quick kid. First time seeing this young man, and already he's making an impact in this game. Clock down to 5-12. Football is at the 47-39. The man in motion again is Yount. This will be Barus again up the middle. Ah -ah! Nowhere to go. Big number 98 for Central. Chris Bryant, the junior, stopping that in its tracks. And that will bring up fourth down. So a good, a good stop here in the middle by the Cape Central defense. Let's see what they do from the 46 as the punt team is out. This looks to be Daniel Francisco punting away. And Francisco with a short one up in the air. It's a high banker. Will take a little bit of a bounce. Comes sneaking back to the 25. And that's where Cape Central will begin with 4.14 to go for the opening quarter. Good-looking first quarter for the kids. This portion of tonight's ball game is brought to you by our great friends at Auto Trim Design. On South Kings Highway in Cape Toronto, across from Brennick and Chevrolet, they have all the wraps for your automobile, whether big or small, car or truck. Auto Trim and Design, 800-866-8558. 7-0 is your score as we're back to action here. Wing T's formation. The handoff, this is number 25, Mikey Jones. Got a good run to the outside. He could take it to the house. See ya. 75 yards. No flags. Touchdown, Tigers. Boy, one play does make a difference. Mikey Jones, the sophomore, the second leading rusher on this club. He over 200 yards on the season. He just added 75 to his total. Things are looking up for Cape Central football under first-year head coach Nathan Norman. Calvin Loving again on for the extra point. 13-0 right now. Again, out of the hold of Cavanis. Awaiting the snap. There it goes. Awaiting the kick. It goes. It's high. It's right through the upright. So we'll take a short break. Cape Central now up. 14 to nothing. This is Southeast Missouri High School football on MABN.net. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid America Sports, MABN.net. Presented by Southeast Health. And we're back here at beautiful 
Tiger Stadium as the football comes and is fumbled off of a popular blood player all the way back to the two-yard line. This is 35, Cornelius Timothy running for his life, still on his feet, still going. He may have one man to beat. Kyle Lovett can't get to him. He just does get him. A touchdown saving play by Kyle Lovick, but some really poor tackling way back deep in a Poplar Bluff territory. The football was fumbled at the two and brought all the way out to the central 47 yard line. How in the world did that kid do that? Football is at the 47. Back to pass, a long throw. It's up, it's high, it's a flag, and it's coming back. It's coming back. It is definitely coming back. The, the reception made by Trent Udaley, but flag thrown at the 40 yard line. Might have been a hold or an illegal, illegal contact. Somebody's going to be flagged with it. An eligible man downfield is what the call is. So that'll negate what would have been a 30-plus yard reception by the 5'6 receiver, Trent Gedaly. They'll move that football back about five yards from uh, the line of scrimmage. That'll be first and 15 at that point across midfield. Football is at the... That's an interesting spot. They put it at midfield. It should be at the 48-yard line. Well, if they say 50, that's what we say, too. First and 15 at that point. The handoff, this is Baruch trying to slice through. Gets inside the sticks. A late flag on that play. The question is, is it a hold or is it a face mask? More often than it's a hold, and I think that's what the... Umpire is calling here in this six-man group. Nope, they're going to call this an face mask. So Barus will get credit up to the 44 plus five more. Nope, you can't grab the face mask like that, homeboy. Six yards for Barus, plus you add the incidental face mask. So it'll be second and about four at the 39. The wing T. This is this the, the quarterback number nine. Griggs on a carry. He will stay on his feet, but stop short of the first down. Good open field tackle by Christian Cavanis, who's pumped up about that. That'll bring up third down. Boy, Griggs looked like he was going to be caught behind the line of scrimmage, but made a couple of nipply moves. The football is at the central thirty-seven. A two-yard gain is going to be third, about a short two. The line of gain is just before the 35-yard line. We're working on 253 for the opening quarter. Trips to the far side. This is a carry, and it will go nowhere for Cornelius Timothy. Everybody and their grandma wrapping him up. First man in was big 57. Martez Carter, the 5'10 sophomore. That'll bring up fourth down. And decision time for Coach Perus. Do you kick it or do you go for it? The football will be back about the 38-yard line is where they'll spot this. And this is now 32, excuse me. Third and about a long two short three. Trips to the far side. Man in motion. Trying to slide over. And off, this is Timothy again. He ain't going nowhere for a second straight play. And looks like it will be Brian on the tackle. That will bring up fourth down. Football again at the 38. That's a no-gainer. So are you going to go for it or are you going to put it away? Looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down. 141 and counting here for the first quarter. So far, so good for Central, up 14-0 against Poplar Bluff in this Seymour North contest. They're going to go for it. Three wide doubles to the near side with the blocking back. On the carry, a flag on the play. I think somebody went too quick. The question is who? It will be Pop. No, 
it looks like it's going to be encroachment. Yep, cheap five. So a cheap five and a cheap first down for Pop Blair Bluff. They'll put the football at 33, and that's something you as a young Cape Central team, but a lot of sophomores and juniors do not want to have. So rolling the beautiful pigskin engine while they're getting ready for the play. Still waiting to get the St. Louis-Philadelphia game started. All square t- between Arizona and Milwaukee. 2-2 two, two in the ninth inning. Play action. This is Griggs. Back to pass. Throws downfield. It's caught. This is Miller. Almost the, the touchdown, but does get it to the five-yard line. And way to get that one off by young Mr. Michael Griggs. Cambrio Miller gets the football to the five. And Poplar Bluff's first red zone opportunity. That goes for 28 yards. So Poplar Bluff knocking at the door of their first score of the first of the game. We're under a minute, call it 53 seconds. Take a good looking crowd on hand once again in this third game ever at Tiger Stadium. Shifts to the far side once again. He'll try to spread him out all night long. Hand off to Barus. Barus is stopped at the line by Jacob Borboom. Second down. Second and goal at the five. The clock is running. We're sitting on 20 seconds. This may be the last play of the opening quarter. No gain on that play. Well, good to see all the alumni out in the res- new reserve seats. They are feeling pretty good about themselves. Three receivers, doubles to the near side with a blocking back on second down. And the flip out, this is Barus to the outside. That's coming back. That is indeed coming back. An illegal block to be coming up right about the line of scrimmage on a would-be touchdown run by Austin, by Austin Barus, and they'll push this back 10 on a hold. So 2.7 seconds remaining. They'll push the football back a natural 10. Or where will they flip the football? They'll put it at the 13-yard line. Again, the penalty is holding. And they're going to run this clock out. Nope, not yet. Second and goal at the 13-yard line. 2.7 seconds left. Cape Central up 14-0 on Poplar Bluff. Central coming in 4-1 and one on the season. Bluff at 1-5. and five. Central's only second conference game of the year. On second and goal. This is Griggs back to pass. A man in his face. Side steps one. Throws and well out of the grasp of the would-be receiver Drew. Down and that will take care of the opening quarter. Touchdown run by Christian Cavanis and Mikey Jones. With the Cape Central Tigers on the board. The score, 14 to nothing. We're back in just a moment. This is beautiful Southeast Missouri High School football on MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Here on MABN.net is Austin Barus on second and goal. Trying to blast his way home. He's short. Wow. I mean, he took almost all 13 of those yards, but he'll be short by about a half yard to start the second quarter. And that'll bring up fourth and goal. Goal. 
Now the question is, do you bring out the kicking unit or do you go for it here on fourth down? They're going to go for it and try to put their first score on the board to start this second quarter. Alvin and Washington here at Tiger Stadium. Popular book taking on your Cape Central Tigers, who are 4-1. and one. Now this is Baru. Sees a hole. He's in. Touchdown, Poplar Bluff. Right over the guard, and that's how it, it, it got rolled up. And Austin Baru gets on the board. 14-6 now the score in favor of the Cape Central Tigers. And now for the extra point will be number 81, Matt Riggins. Here comes the snap. The kick is up. It's high, and it is no good. Wide left, they say. A little bit of a shank. So. Tigers got to correct what they just saw there. 14-6 is your score on the one-yard run by Austin Barus. Just a reminder, coming up next week, we're going to be right back here as the Tigers battle. Our friends from the from Farmington, and that game will come your way Friday, October 14th. Just log on right here to mabn.net for all the action. It is Cape Central Tigers football as we're going to be in Class 5, District 1. Again, for those of you who will be joining us, it is Friday, October 14th at 6.45 p.m. The Farmington Black Knights will take on the Cape Central Tigers. Big win last year for Central as they ripped off a 9-1 regular season. Back to action we go. This again will be number 69, Colton Mannon, set to kick away. 14-6 your score, Central. Leading as as an onside kick as he tried to get it back, but no go. The good hands man, number 11, Austin Martin, who had a fumble recovery on this field during week two in that big win against Festus. He gives the central great field position. So first and ten at that point. We've got 11-15 for the first half. Again, the boys in black and orange come up to the line. With Christian Cavanis at quarterback. Wing T set, man in motion. Play action, a handoff. Oh, they're going to push him way, way back in the moon docks. Chris Martin swarmed on by a whole gang of folk. Cody Fromm, number 44. The junior linebacker in on the stop, second down. And Chris Martin has been hampered by a leg injury for the good portion of this year and really has not been able to get on track since then. Although his best game hit was against North County two weeks ago right here on this very field. Second down, the football back to the 40-yard line on a five-yard loss. Wing T, Mikey Jones in motion. He'll get the carry. He'll try to get to the outside, get himself a running room, and maybe get a yard or two before Poplar Bluff swarms on him on the far side. Jones, who had the second touchdown of the night for Central on a big 75-yard run, will pick up two this time as he stopped before the six. Third down coming up with 10, 13 to go here for the first half on a beautiful night in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It's almost balmy, like about 60, 65 degrees. Again, we'll keep you up to date on St. Louis and Philadelphia. That game's first pitch should be going in a few minutes from now. They're all square at two in the ninth inning between Arizona and Milwaukee. The winner of that game will face off the winner of the St. Louis and the Philadelphia game. And Cavanis is flushed way back to the Boondocks. E ouch. Give the sack to Sean Sisney, the senior. And back to the 25 yard line. Fourth down. Oh, gosh. A huge loss for the Tigers. E man. I mean, no room in the end for anybody. 
football all the way back to the 25. And here comes Cavanis with the punt. It's a good-looking punt. The ball fielded at the 45. Oh, great tackle across midfield by 57 Martez Carter. We called his name a few times. Or was that Cody Owens number six? No, it was 57. Nope, that was Cody Owens, by the way. It was Cody Owens. The run back that time was by Daniel Francisco. He puts the football at the central 48-yard line, and now time is called. And this time... Time out by the Tigers with nine minutes to go here for the opening quarter. Again, if you just joined us, it is 14-6, Cape Central leading Poplar Bluff. Central getting on the board in the first quarter with touchdown runs by Christian Cavanis of two yards and by Mikey Jones of 75 yards. Just now, a one-yard run by Austin Barus of Poplar Bluff. The kick went wide left, and that's where we stand right now. Taking a look at what's going on just underway between St. Louis and Philadelphia in the top of the first. They're going to the 10th inning in Milwaukee as the Brewers and the Diamondbacks looking to decide that series. Coming up tomorrow, the ALCS will be getting going as Texas, who knocked off Tampa Bay three games to one, takes on Detroit, a rousing three-game to two winner over the New York Yankees. Football's at the Tiger 48-yard line as we're set, set for this particular run through the through the mud. Three receivers hit, doubles to the far side. Play action. This is Michael Griggs back to pass. A lot of time. It's going up. It's high. It could be intercepted. And it is by Christian Cavanitz, who leaps right over Drew Down for the pickoff and first down central. Using all of that six foot one to get himself in the mix. Football will be down at the 13 yard line with no return. That'll give Central the football with 8.53 remaining for the first half. So let's see if the first turnover of the night proves to be fruitful for the Tigers. Coming up at halftime, we'll get you caught up on all of these scores from across the heartland on the Southeast Hell Halftime Report. Cavanis and company come up to the line. They've got a wing T formation on the carry. This is Cavanis going to the outside. He'll get yanked all the way back to the two. They're going to mark him at the four, second down. Man, where is the blocking tonight? Way, way, way back in the boondocks. The tackle on the play by again. This time it's number 67, Michelle. They're going to mark Cavanis the four-yard line. That is a nine-yard loss. And the last thing Central needs to give up is a safety at this point. Second down, football. Marked at the four-yard line. It's, a, it's 19 to go. Man in motion. Cavanis. Hands off, and right at the line of scrimmage, and maybe losing a couple there. Is that Martin? Nope, that's Jones. So the central office offense, who is on all cylinders in the first quarter, is going backwards here in this quarter. And you're going to say no game. So lucky them. Third and 19 at the four-yard line this evening on Third down conversions. Central is 0 for 1. They need to get this one deep out of the end zone and in a hurry. Mikey Jones in motion. Play action. This is Cavanis. He'll get stopped for no gain. Man, where in the world is this offense going? Fourth down. So no gain on the play. Fourth and 19 with the clock running seven minutes to go for the half. And now a short porch. 
Canvas. Now about five yards deep in his end zone with the play clock down to 10. He's got to get this ball off and almost blocked again. This time the ball is down with great field position for Poplar Bluff at the central 37. We're breaking it. Nope, we'll keep it right here as teams switch off. 6.42 to go here for the second quarter. 14 to 6. In favor of the K Central Tigers leading the Poplar Bluff Mules. We're in SEMO North Conference this evening. Central has another conference game coming up. Next week, the Farmington Knights come to town. Then they'll wrap up conference play against Sykeston as Austin Baruso on the carry. Stop for a short gain, about maybe three yards to the 34. Second down. Austin Baruso has looked pretty solid this evening. As he gets up to 34, quick look at the auto trim design in-game stat ticker. Rushing on the night for young Mr. Bruce. Eight carries, 48 yards, and a touchdown. Second down about seven as we come to the halfway point. Hold it. We have time on the field. And who calls it? It is Poplar Bluff. A short break, and we're back in 30 seconds. Central 14, Poplar Bluff 6. This is Southeast Missouri High School Football on MABN.net. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid-America Sports, MABN.net. Presented by Southeast Health. We're back to action here as Austin Barus is on the carry and still going, breaking tackles in the first down. Boy, Austin Barus, my gosh. The coach's kid is getting in work. Red zone opportunity at the 20-yard line for the junior Austin Barus. 5'6", 145, and built to work. Already over 60 yards on the night with a touchdown. 545 and counting for the quarter. Red zone opportunity. Here's a handoff again to Barus. Barus gets back one defender, but gets a stop for a short game. Second down. Bruce on the carry. Will be marked at about the 18-yard line. A two-yard pickup, or is it three? 17 is where they'll mark it. Second down. Receivers to the near side. A man in motion. Play action. This is now Griggs on the carry. Near first down by the 12. And is timeout called? Or do we have a down player? Nope. Griggs on the carry. will make it third down and short at the 12-yard line. Clock running with 437 for the first half. Again, we'll get you caught up with scores across Southeast Missouri on the Southeast South Halftime Report and also a Major League Baseball update. Play clock down the six with 4.25 to go. A man in motion. Three receivers doubles to the far side. Griggs on the carry. No, fourth down. Good pursuit up the middle that time by Jacob Campbell and company. Fourth down. And they will mark him as no gain on the play. So decisions, decisions, decisions. Go for it here or kick the three. They're going to go for it. We see Barus in the lineup. 
Here we go, fourth down. They're going to go for it here. Bruce in the backfield with a three receiver set. Double to the far side. Long snap count. They're going to get this is a flip out. This is Bruce. He's pursued and Cavanis. Christian Cavanis with another turnover making play. This time stopping Bruce in the backfield. First down, Tigers. Great, great. Pursuit by Christian Cavanis. The football is marked at the 13 yard, yard line. Ball turned over on downs. How about that? 307 and counting. And I think they ran too much time off the clock. That's, that's a turnover on downs. And the clock is supposed to stop. They'll give, they'll give Central about maybe an extra 10 seconds here. And while we have a moment here to catch our breath and restore ourselves, we'd like to remind you tonight's game is brought to you by our fabulous friends at Southeast Health. Don't forget about the Southeast Cancer Center on Mount Auburn Road. For those of you who have loved ones looking for that specialized cancer treatment, Southeast Health at schealth.org. Southeast Health, the difference is in how you're treated. Again, we welcome you to beautiful. Central High School. Tiger Stadium is in the house as the popular both mules take on the Cape Central Tigers. And coming up next week, we're back here again at Tiger Stadium as the Farmington Black Knights take on Central in district action. Also, that's a SEMO North Conference game. Pre-game is at 645. The kickoff is at 7 on Friday, October 14th, right here on your home for Southeast Missouri High School football, Mid-America Sports on mabn.net. Three minutes, 25 seconds is where they'll reset the clock to. They have 32.5. They haven't quite figured out this new scoreboard yet up here. Again, 325 should be the time on the clock. And there it is. Exactly it is. St. Louis has now scored with a one nothing lead. Meanwhile, it's bottom of the 10th of Milwaukee. A chance to send Arizona home. They're all tied at two. Meanwhile, back here in Cape Girardeau, we're set for this particular possession of Cape Central the Tigers football. Wing T, a man in motion, is Chris Martin. He'll get the call, trying to slide up middle. Moving, grooving, shaking, bigger. Oh, first down. He's on the run. A man to beat is Cambrio Miller. Can he beat him? Not quite, but he'll get down in a late flag that might be 15 on top of that. Great run by the senior, Chris Miller. Football down at the 29-yard line, pending the flag. We are back here on MABN.net. Sorry for the quick technical difficulties. We're down to 20.3 seconds as we are indeed inside the auto trim and design final minute. We're still sitting at 14 to 6, Cape Central leading Poplar Bluff, a timeout on the field. And it may be putting some more time on the clock here. Right before the break, Calvin Loving attempted what was a 38-yard field goal, and it was just short. It looked like it may have been slightly tipped a little bit by Sean Sisney of Poplar Bluff. For those of you just joining us, here's how the, the action has won so far. Cape Central in the first quarter wound up with two rushing touchdowns, a two-yard run by Christian Cavanis, and also a 75-yard run by Mikey Jones. Poplar Bluff so far has answered back with a two-yard run by Austin Barus, but they have been close, but no cigar as Christian Cavanis has thwarted them twice on defense with an interception and a possession-turning tackle in the backfield. As it stands right now, we have 22 seconds remaining. It is second and three at the 20-yard line. And here comes Poplar Bluff. But a, the double receiver is a flag on the play. Throw down the field. It's up, almost intercepted. The catch is made, and they're trying to bring the young man down. There's two flags on the play. 
The reception made by Kimbrell Miller, but there was a flag right around the line of scrimmage, and that may come back as maybe a motion or procedure. Central coaches are saying it is against Poplar Bluff. Illegal procedure is the call. Probably one of the running backs went a little too quick toward the line of scrimmage. So what would have been a great first down catch and run for Kimbrell Miller pushes the football back to the 25-yard line with 13.1 remaining. Again, it is a false start against the Central Tigers, and I think Central's going to take themselves 60. Nope, they're going to just come over here to the near side hash. So 13.1 remains here for this opening quarter. And a great crowd on hand here on the home side. Alumni, current students, and supporters of Central Football all lining the stadium. Here we go. Play clock is down to three, down to two, down to one. They get it off. Griggs back to pass, pump once, pump twice. A man in his face going high, going up, and is going way out of bounds. 6.4 6.4 seconds. Again, coming up at the break, we'll take time out for our sponsors, and then we'll come back to get you updated across the heartland on the Southeast Health Halftime Report, including a Major League Baseball update on the National League Divisional Series. As we stand right now, we're at third and eight, the football at the 25-yard line. And now time is called on the field. It'll be Bluff calling its second timeout of the quarter. Let's take a quick break, and we'll come back for more action. Central 14 and a six for Poplar Bluff on MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. We're back here on MABN.net as it is third down. It's a high pass. It's up. It is intercepted again by Christian Cavanis at the four-yard line. He's going down the left sideline. Cut back in. Oh, and he is clothesline as the half ends. Second pickoff tonight for the quarterback, Christian Cavanis, as we go to the break. Your score at halftime, Cape Central 14, Poplar Bluff 6. Please interact with us at game day at mabn.net. You're watching Southeast Missouri High School football on mabn.net, Mid-America Sports. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. Southeast Health, the difference is how you're treated.
life's this hard, graduating can be even harder. But you can help Ativa and the students in your community make it through by visiting BoostUp.org. Presented by Southeast Health. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. We are back here on MABN.net at the half of our SEMO North Conference game. It is the Cape Central Tigers, 14, the Poplar Bluff Mules, 6. Right now, let's give a listen to the Cape Central Tiger Marching Band.
And that is the Cape Central Tiger marching band you see there in front of you. As we are here in the Southeast Health Halftime Report, we'll take a break from them and come on back for our halftime uh, updates of high school football across the heartland as well as Major League Baseball as St. Louis right now leads their Game 5 matchup with Philadelphia that score one to nothing. You are checking out high school football in Southeast Missouri on the new MABN. Net. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid-America Sports, MABN.net. Presented by Southeast Health. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. <laughs> Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid-America Sports. MABN.net Presented by Southeast Health And we're back here on MABN.net as we are at the half Cape Central leading Poplar Bluff in this matchup of Southeast Missouri North Division teams 14-6 to 6 is the score here at the break. Let's take a look at some of the scores across the heartland. Right now, at the end of the first quarter, Chaffee leading Molden 12-7 in a very key SEMO South Conference game. Carothersville leading Dexter 21-13 in the SEMO Central. That's also at the end of one. Sykeston looking for their program's 600th win, 14-0. Or should I say now 35-0 uh, against Kennett. That should be at the half. Scott City trying to battle for uh, the lead in the SEMO South Conference. They lead it at the break, 17-16. Charleston right now taking on Herculaneum, and Charleston is leading uh, at the break, 18-8. Interesting there. Other games we'll be checking for you. As a matter of fact, we have one right here. Farmington. All over Jackson right now, 22 to nothing, and that could change even as we speak. Let's also get you into the mix for ESPN.com, giving us the scores here from across the Major League Baseball. It's a final in 10, and Milwaukee moves on to the National League Championship Series. They knock off the Arizona Diamondbacks 3 to 2. Right now, bottom of the second in Philadelphia, St. Louis leading Philadelphia by the score of one to nothing. Winner of that game will take on the Brew Crew for the right to go to the World Series. And that's a quick check of scores across the country in baseball and other things like that. We'll take another break, and then we'll come back and talk about the first half. My guest at that time will be Keelan Moore, former All-State running back here at Cape Central, to give his View on what's been going on. Stay right here, 14-6, to 6, Cape Central, leading Poplar Bluff. This is Southeast Missouri High School Football on MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, 
find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. The magical thing about using energy wisely is that anyone can do it. Turn off lights. Use energy saving light bulbs. And turn off computers and game systems when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Grab a grown up and go online to energy.gov slash kids. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? Do you sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to AHRQ.gov. And we're back here on MABN.net. Cape Central 14, Poplar Bluff 6. Don't forget, if you want to interact with us, our email is gameday at MABN.net. Alvin Washington now joined by my special guest, Keelan Moore, All-State running back from the Cape Central Tigers from last year's team. Welcome back. Uh, I, t I tell you, as, as, you look at, as you look at this, uh, this Central team tonight, uh, they've had their moments uh, in not being able to stop uh, running back Austin Barus, but for the most part, they're doing a lot, a lot good on defense, especially Christian Cavanis with two picks. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the safety, uh, him coming from the safety spot, he's coming up very fast, reading the plays very well. He's been doing pretty good. That's the best defense I've seen since I've been watching every game. Cavanis also with a two-yard run this evening. Mikey Jones with a 75-yard run. You gotta hand it to the sophomore. He is really getting to, into the flow of this offense. Oh yeah, and they should have him in there more. Let him play a lot. Then next year he'd be the man to go to. I tell you, I'm very impressed with Austin Barus, number three for Poplar Bluff. This kid at five eleven, uh, should I say five six, one forty five? The junior, he keeps those legs turning. That's what a good running back always is supposed to do. Oh yeah, he's been breaking a lot of tackles and getting far off every play. Central just need to wrap up. Looking into the second half with Poplar Bluff getting the football, what is Central going to have to do on defense in this first possession to reestablish control? Uh, watch the play action because they've been running a lot, so they might try to do something like that, but also try to lock them down and get another score and to be up some more. Put the game away a little bit. With the district coming up next week and considering the gauntlet that Central has to go through, especially with Farmington here and Sykes are there on the 21st, do you think the all-important momentum, especially a team as young as this, is, is needs to be in place heading into district play? Oh, yeah, definitely. They, they should just come together a little more, begin to play harder, practice harder, and they'd be all right. Keelan Moore joining your Shirley Alvin Washington here on the Southeast Health Halftime Report. Cape Girardeau Central 14, Poplar Bluff 6. We're back after this two-minute timeout. Stay right here. This is Southeast Missouri High School Football on MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, 
You'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Do I look like someone who is at risk for heart disease? Well, guess what? I am. Heart disease took my dad's life, but it doesn't have to take mine. Because 80% of cardiac events in women may be prevented if we make the right choices. 80%. You may not know you're at risk, but one woman dies every minute from this largely preventable disease. Help bring a voice to this silent killer. Speak up to save lives at GoRedForWomen.org. And we're back here on MABN.net. We're at halftime between the Cape Central Tigers and the Poplar Bluff Mules. At the break, Poplar Bluff is down 14-6 against your Tigers. Got some updates from across the heartland on the Southeast Health area scoreboard. We get a report from Dexter that Carruthersville is leading that game 35-28. Dexter just had a score uh, as the... Bearcats look to battle state-ranked Carruthersville in a, a cross-class showdown. Sykes to now up 34 to nothing on Kennett. Uh, that's uh, in the second half of play. Or should I say, that's the first half, by the way. Also, uh, if Malden 14, Chaffee 12. That's at the half, so Malden has indeed come back and overtaken the Red Devils for positioning in the Seymour South Conference. Perryville leading East Prairie by the score of twenty of twenty six to fourteen. Farmington right now, late first half, thirty six to seven. Again, Scott City leading Haytai seventeen sixteen at the break. Park Hill Central leading Pacific in conference play 35-7. Carruthersville now at 41-28 as we get a late score. Perryville now right before the half up 26-20 against the East Prairie. Major League Baseball update. St. Louis Cardinals up 1-0. That's now going into the third inning. Meanwhile, as we mentioned earlier tonight, Arizona has now been eliminated by Milwaukee. That was in 10 innings, the final 3-2. to two. Milwaukee winning the NLDS by the three games to two mark. Texas and Detroit set to go at it coming up on Saturday in game one of the ALCS. The winners of tonight's NLDS game five will meet up on Sunday. Milwaukee by virtue of its record, will indeed head to would indeed, where they'll stay home unless Philadelphia wins. If Philadelphia wins, then game one will be in Philadelphia on Sunday afternoon. So that gets you caught up to date. Let's take another break and we'll come back and get the second half up and going. Cape Central 14, Poplar Bluff 6. This is Southeast Missouri High School Football on MABN. 
the results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. The magical thing about using energy wisely is that anyone can do it. Turn off lights. Use energy saving light bulbs. And turn off computers and game systems when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Grab a grown up and go online to energy.gov slash kids. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? Do you sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to AHRQ.gov. Back here on MABN.net, getting ready for second half action here in our contest between the Cape Central Tigers and the Poplar Bluff Mules. Central leads it 14-6, to heading into the second stanza. I'm Alvin Washington here at beautiful Tiger Stadium in Cape Girardeau. We hope you've been enjoying tonight's game. Next week, we're going to be hosting our good friends from over at Farmington. That game was October 14th. We'll have the broadcast starting at 6.45 p.m. as the young kids get ready to see what they'll do for the second half. Again, next week, district playoff football, Class 4, District 1. The Farmington Black Knights take on your Cape Central Tigers in the first of three district games we'll have for you right here on MABN.net. Next Friday night, October 14th, 6.45 p.m. Third quarter just about set to get going here. Now Central had the ball to start the game, and more than likely it'll be Poplar Bluff that will take the ball to start the second half. So we're just about set to go here. Let's slap 12 on the board. And we are ready to rock this funky joint for all of y'all. Glad to have everybody all across the heartland and all across the country joining us here at beautiful Tiger Stadium. Great crowd on hand watching the festivities. We hope you're enjoying all the festivities at the, in the comfort of your home on MABN.net. Again, our pregame festivities with this. This is homecoming. Dr. Michael Cowan, the principal here at Central, introduced a woman who was exactly 100 years old, so the same as the athletic program here at Central. They're celebrating their 100th year as well, too, with their first ever season on campus. And they've never done that in 100 years of football, but. This year they're doing quite well for themselves, and we're about set to rock the rock the house as Kyle Lovick is set to kick away for the kids in black and orange. Look like that's Daniel Francisco back to receive, and we are off. And it was a quick squib kick. It get caught by the hands team number 62. 
Trent Wellborn, the junior offensive lineman, giving Poplar Bluff some great field position. So they'll take over at their own 38, first and 10, as we get going here in the heartland. Michael Griggs is the starting quarterback. He's back to pass. Throws downfield. It's caught. And a short gain that time by Austin Goodrich, the senior wideout. Second down. Look like there's 44, Jacob Margetta, the linebacker junior. On the tackles. Football up to about the 44. And that's a pickup of close to six. Early going here in the second half. Central getting touchdown runs from Christian Cavanis and Mikey Jones. Austin uh, Baruch coming for the long touchdown. And, oh, wow, this is Michael Griggs on the play action. He's going to get a lot of yards to the 30-yard line. They, they were looking for Baruch to get the ball, and Griggs on the play action with a nice run all the way down to the 30th Central. And that was the one thing we were talking about in the break that Central has been unable to defend, and that's the play-action run. And coming out of that spread offense, that can be quite a killer. First down football is now at the Central 30-yard line, 11-15 to go. Spread, three wide, doubles to the far side. Griggs back to pass, pump once. It's up, it's high, got tipped at the line, and Griggs takes a spell. The remotely closest receiver to that may have been number 10, Austin Goodrich, and they'll bring up second down. Again, we put the football back at the 30-yard line. Again, if you want to converse with us, our email is right there, gameday at mabn.net. Boy, we got some great stuff coming up in the winter time with the first basketball season on videocast. We'll look to have the Charleston Blue Jays a part of our schedule. Second down, football at the 30. On the handoff, this is Barus trying to drag folks. He'll get stopped or behind the line of scrimmage. Austin Martin there on the tackle. A little help from Chris Bryant, and that will bring up third down. Just about a minute going by here, about a yard loss on the play to the 31. Darren Yelp, number 87, now coming in to help out matters for the purple and white. As they come up with a double receiver set once again. Back to pass is Griggs. Rush coming from the outside, throws up, it's high. That one is intercepted by Tay Jenkins. Jenkins just gets tackled right down from behind. No thanks to number 38, Drew Dowd, and that is the third interception today. For Michael Griggs as Central Forge get another drive deep in the red zone. Christian Cavanis, who was the starting quarterback for the Central Tigers, has two of those picks this evening. And we're just about set to get this one going as Central is heading to the left this period in the black with white numbers, orange trim. Central going with that wing T set that made him strong with a 10 and 2 record last year. One of the biggest turnarounds in Heartland football history. A man in motion is Mikey Jones. They'll give it to the fullback, Austin Martin. Not much, up to the 21, second down. Austin Martin, the, the senior, again about a few weeks back in the opening night game here, a scooped up the 80 yard fumble recovery. And that proved to be the game winner in a 21-20 tight victory here at Tiger Stadium. The Tigers are definitely loving their home field advantage. Let's see if they can extinguish Poplar Bluff in the mix. Wing T on second down with a slot to the far side. A man in motion is Mikey Jones, and he will try and break out, but to no avail. Jake Pullum and company coming up on run support. And a flat, is there a flag? Nope. They thought there was going to be a fumble, but they say a man was down by contact. So that'll bring up third down. Third downs this evening. Central is 0 for 2 on it. Poplar Bluff on third downs is 1 for 5.
Here we go, third down with 9-10 to go. A man in motion is Mikey Jones. Play action as Cavan is rolling to his left. Receivers in his face. Talks a couple of tacklers. Looking, throws downfield. That's a catch by Borbum and a first down. Jacob Borbum with three great. Chain moving catches as he gives Christian Cavanis a hand. And whoa, is this Cavanis back here on the. Nope, that's not Cavanis. That is Austin Martin that is down for the count downfield. Austin Martin is bumming right now. He's favoring one of his ankles or shins as the trainers are out there to tend to him. We'll take a short break and come on back for second half action. Again, your score right now, Cape 14, Poplar Bluff 6. Short timeout. This is MABN.net. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid America Sports, MABN.net. We're back here on MABN.net as Austin Martin gets helped off the field. First and 10, the football is now at the central 34 after a great reception by Jacob Borholm. Slap to the right, man in motion in the wings, he said. Play action, Kavanaugh has a man in his face. Ah, Boar Boom had it in his hands and dropped it. Second down. Can't drop those wide open like that to keep the change moving. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you this evening by our great friends at Southeast Health. At Southeast Health, the difference is in how you're treated. Second and ten, the football is at the 34-yard line. Clocks up with 8.41 for the quarter. Man in motion, the handoff. This is now Austin Martin. And he keeps turning legs. That's actually Mikey Jones on the carry. He'll get across the 35 to about the 38. That'll bring up a very important third down for the Tigers. As they look to maintain this 14-6 lead on the Poplar Bluff Mules here in the third quarter. Central has thwarted some would-be scoring drives by the Mules on three interceptions, two by Christian Cavanis and one by Tate Jenkins, who now comes in the game as a wingback. He'll get split out to the near side. The far side will be Jacob Borboom and Chris Martin. Shotgun formation now four wide, doubles either side. Low snap, this is Cavanis moving through, shaking and banking, first down and more at the 45. There's the Christian Cavanis we know. Christian Cavanis doing what he does best, and that's moving a pile. He's the leading rusher on this ball club coming into the tonight's contest, although Mikey Jones with that 75-yard run might have the honors tonight unless Jones Brink breaks off another big one his first carry of the night with a 75 yard touchdown run that went all the way up the sidelines and was able to evade a number of tacklers 725 and counting the ball at the 45 for Cape Central back to pass two step drop this is now Jenkins on the outside on the bubble screen a stiff arm first down and more as he steps out Jenkins steps out about the Poplar Bluff 44. And that's a good-looking bubble screen play there. Tigers first down with 7-12 to go. And they're now starting to move the sticks with this passing offense that was a little dormant last year, save for a few flickering moments with Zach Bohr. Boom had a few touchdown catches. And Andrew Williams, who led the club in touchdown receptions. Slot to the near side now is Tate Jenkins. 
Man in motion is, is now, this is Jacob Campbell trying to get to the outside, does, but gets pulled down by Sean Sisney. And Sean Sisney has been all over the place for Poplar Bluff. Second down. Clock running with 6.57 to go for the third quarter. Christian Cavan, as you see there, wearing number eight with two pickoffs tonight and a touchdown run. He'll come up to the line now with Tay Jenkins on the far side of a wing T set. He'll get the ball. Oh, man. That's an incomplete pass. A little bit low that time on the bubble screen, and that'll bring up third down. That was the play that got them the first down up to the 44 of Poplar Bluff. A little bit higher up, that might have gotten another first down instead, and it's now third down and seven. Football at the 41. Jacob Borbohm slowly but surely turning into a third down specialist. He'll go to the one side along with Chris Martin. Tate Jenkins on the other side with, with number five, A.D. Carter. Man on man, D from the boys. And here comes Cavins again, going to the left side. Duncan Dodson, he's going to take this one in the house. 10 5, touchdown in favor of the, the Team Central Tigers. Second rushing touchdown tonight for the senior quarterback, Christian Cavins. And a kid. That one goes for 41 yards. And I believe Christian Cavins is retaking the, the rushing lead right back. 20 to 6 your score with 621 to go here in the third. About 200 rushing yards on the evening for the Cape Central Tigers, and they're looking for more. Kyle Lovick on for the extra point out of Cavins. So the snap is down. The kick is up. And that bad boy is good. 621 to go here. We'll take a short break. Central up, 21-6 on Poplar Bluff on MBN.net. Results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Back here on uh, MABN.net. 6.21 to go here for the third quarter. A nice 41-yard run by Christian Cavanis makes it the score. 21-6, to six, and that run back will go for naught. Tonight's contest brought to you by our friends at Auto Trim Design, 606 South Kings Highway in Cape Girardeau. Get your car wrapped up in the hottest designs in the heartland. Only at Auto Trim Design of Cape Girardeau, 800-866-8558. Mike Griggs needs a hug quickly. He's been picked off three times. He will now hand off to Austin Barus to the outside. Cuts back in for short gain, second down. Austin Barus with the lone touchdown run of the night. A one-yarder back in the second quarter to bring Poplar Bluff within 14-6 at the time, but that's about as close as they've gotten. Second down, spread formation, doubles on the far side. I'll hand off to Barus again, cutting up the middle. And Central starting to tackle a little bit better than they did the first half against Barus. That's a short game. They'll bring up third down. Third and about maybe 
a short five long four. Clock running with five and a half for the third quarter and the Cape Central faithful have seen yet another good performance by their black and orange. Let's see if it can hold up all the way to the end. At least this time, Poplar Bluff doesn't have to worry about zero yards of total offense that they amassed last year. Breaks back the pass. The pass is up to Darren Yount, and that is the first down across midfield to the Central 48. And that will give, the, give it a first down in Central Territory once again. But with the exception of the Austin Bruce touchdown run, Poplar Bluff has been picked off three times and they turned the ball over on downs. Three of those four plays have been at the hands of Christian Cavanis, who has it at a defensive back. Here's Griggs on the on the option run, and he will get up to near the 40 for being tackled by Jacob Campbell. Second down, he'll mark the football at the 41. Clock running with 4.53 for the third quarter. Don't forget, next Friday night, Farmington comes here to start Class 4 District 1 play, and it'll be the final year that we have a system where the district playoffs are part of the regular season. They'll now become part of the postseason, as there will be now be eight, eight team districts instead of the 16 14 districts. Back to pass on second down is, is, is Mike Griggs. Slug out in the front with a play! Poplar Bluff eats it. And it's a good thing because there was about three black shirts around that football. Holy mackerel. Mike Griggs losing one of his nine lives off his jersey. I bring up third and who done it? Football is now at the Poplar Bluff 49. Four minutes to go here for this third quarter. Coach Nathan Norman of the Tigers, who was the running backs coach last year, has to be pleased at his bounce back performance from his young kids. Trips to the far side on third down. This is Barus on the carry to the outside. Stays on his feet, but short of the first down. Late flag on the mix of that. If that's against Central, that's a big one. And Barus is coming up limping a little bit. He's fine. Incidental face mask, that's, and that should give them a first down. And boy, that you can't have mistakes like that when you have a well-defensed play. Ay, 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 ay. So what should have been fourth down in a punting situation now becomes potentially a first down. And it is. Incidental face mask is the call of the football up to the Central 37, and that is the second incidental face mask that is going against Cape Central for a first down. Three and a half to go here for the third quarter. Central up 21 to 6 on Poplar Bluff, but the Mules are pushing in Tiger territory. Double receiver to the near side. This is uh, not Maroos. It looks to be Alex Leonard. Nope, that's actually 35, Cornelius Timothy, the junior. That'll bring up second down. Now, yard loss on the play, too. Back to the 38-yard line. Three minutes to go for the third quarter. Down. Bluff up to the line. They've got double receivers to the far side. Back to pass is Griggs. It's high. It's long. It's incomplete. Intended for Austin Goodrich, the senior, and that'll bring up third down. Well, Central is starting to really snuff out those long receiver passes. Big third down coming up for Poplar Bluff. Coming into the night's contest at 1-5 and five on the season. And the four in Major League Baseball. St. Louis still up 1-0 on Philadelphia. Earlier tonight, Milwaukee needed 10 to knock off Arizona from the NLDS. That final 3-2. On third down, the throw down field. It's up. It's high. It's caught. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line short of the first down. The reception made by Darren Young, but he's well short. Now the question is, do you go for it if you're Coach Mark Baruch? 
of the Poplar Bluff Mules. Haven't been too successful on third. Now you got fourth and half a stick. And the play clock is all the way down to 10 at that. Now time on the field, and Bluff will take its first time out. And we'll take a break with them. Your score with 2.38 for the third quarter. 21 for Cape Central, 6 for Poplar Bluff. Southeast Missouri High School football continues on MABN.net. There is a place where there are no lockouts holdouts or diva receivers where a hometown hero is made every Friday night where every athlete plays for the love of the game where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid America Sports, MABN.net. Presented by Southeast Health. Here we go, fourth down. Four yards to go. Play action. This is Griggs to the outside. It's intercepted by Chris Martin. He may have a pick six. Oh, that's a block in the back. That's going to come back, but it is the fourth interception of the night for the Cape Central Tigers. It will not go as a touchdown for Chris Martin, unfortunately. Oh, he wanted that. He wanted that pick six in the worst way, unfortunately. It is a hold against Central at the 44 of the Poplar Bluff Mules, but to no avail. Pop, Poplar Bluff is seeing black and orange all over creation. Again, the whole call on the return. We'll put the football at the 46 of Cape Central, and they will look to put this game on ice. Chris Martin with an interception. Tate Jenkins with an interception. And Christian Cavanis, the quarterback of the Central Tigers, with two picks this evening. So Central getting their defensive back swerve on big time. They'll come up with a wing T set. Man in motion is Jacob Campbell. He'll get the call. Slicing through left tackle. Across the 50-yard line and a good game with 2.16 to go. Don't forget coming up on next Friday night. The Formington Black Knights come to Tiger Stadium to take on the Cape Central Tigers. Friday, October 14th for a Class 4 District 1 action. Broadcast time is 6.45 with kickoff at 7. And only on your home for Southeast Missouri football. MABN.net, the new Mid-America Sports. Back to action here. It is second down and short. Again, Mike, it is Jake Campbell in motion. He'll get the call through the middle. First down. Bye-bye. 30, 20, 10. Peace out. Touchdown, Tigers. Put 49 on the board for young Mr. Jacob Campbell. This is now a 27 to 6 ball game in favor of the Tigers. Boy, that was simple up, up left tackle. A little help from the Big Uglies, captained by the ever present number 67, Cody Owens, the senior center, second year as a starter, and has done quite well for himself in the middle. Extra point try coming up. This will be Kyle Calvin Loving once again coming out of the hold of Christian Cavanis. We'll try to make this a 28-6 ball game with a minute 37 to go. Snap is down. Kick is high. It is good. We have 137 to go here for the third quarter. Cape 28. Poplar Bluff 6. Don't forget to join us online and interact with us. Our email address is gameday at mabn.net. Let's take a quick look across the heartland to see what's going on. Let's 
Start of the third quarter, DeSoto leading Windsor 13 to nothing. That's at the Mississippi Area Conference. Herculaneum has just pulled ahead of Charleston in the third, 20 to 18. 41 to 28, Carothersville leading Dexter at the half. Malden right now leading Chaffee in the third quarter, 28 to 19. Sa uh, Sykeston getting closer to their 600th ever win. They lead Kennett 42 to nothing, and this is just after Kennett lost to Malden in a near state record showdown, 75 to 59. Festus leading North County 14 to 7. That's also in the third. That's all the Southeast South area scoreboard. Another low kick, and that'll be fair caught at about the 29 yard line by Poplar Bluff, and that was number five, Alex Lewis on the on the reception. Again, the St. Louis Cardinals are in the fourth inning. They're up one nothing on the Philadelphia Phillies. Winner of that game takes on Milwaukee, a three to two ten inning winner against Arizona and that game starts on this coming Sunday now depending who wins if Mil if Philadelphia wins game one is in Philadelphia if St. Louis wins however game one is in Milwaukee by virtue of their Central Division Championship here we go again to carry this time this is 35 Cornelius Timothy he's got a good run he should have a first down a touchdown saving tackle that time by A.D. Carter, the junior defensive back. And, and they should have it. They do have it just short of the 30-yard line. So the chains move with a minute 26 to go as we roll the beautiful pigskin footage from right here at gorgeous Tiger Stadium in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. 28-6, Cape Central leading Poplar Bluff. This is Timothy again on the carry, trying to break tackles across the 45 to about the 46. A good seven-yard gain, second down. Coming up to the final minute of the quarter. For whatever Poplar Bluff has been able to do in the middle of the field, Central has killed them in the red zone with four turnovers. All of those interceptions. Wait a minute, what's going on? We have time on the field and the umpire says somebody's equipment for Poplar Bluff is not kosher. All right, we're set to go. Rolling the beautiful pigskin footage. Trips receivers far side. Again, the handoff. This is Timothy, and he is very close to the first down once again. So it looks like they're going to go exclusively with Cornelius Timothy on this particular drive to try and soften up the middle of the defense. Just short of the first down marked by about a half of football. Last half minute of this third quarter. Poplar Bluff has had their chances. It's just... Central has come up with some big defensive plays. Two picks by Christian Cavanitz and a pick each by Tay Jenkins and Christopher Martin. This is Griggs on the carry himself. He'll get the first down and more. Across midfield to the Central 43 with 1.5 seconds left. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. Great third quarter. Actually, it's 10 seconds left, I should say. Now that'll take us to the end of the third. The great third quarter for Cape Central. Uh, two long touchdown runs, one by Christian Cavanis and one by Jacob Campbell. Final 12 minutes coming upon us. The Central Tigers 28, Poplar Bluff 6 at Southeast Missouri High School Football on MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated.
copyrighted broadcast of MAVN.net and the Mid America Broadcasting Network may not be reproduced for any reason without express written consent. Alvin and Washington back here at beautiful Tiger Stadium in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. The fourth quarter is upon us. Mike Riggs is back to pass on first and ten. Throws outfield and maybe another pick. Almost! A.D. Carter was the first, last man standing at that one, but do we have a flag? No, no flags. That almost became the fifth pickoff tonight for the black and orange as we're in the fourth quarter. Alvin and Washington here in the press box at Tiger Stadium, and the central crowd has seen another fantastic performance by the black and orange, but next week is not going to be easy. The Farmington Black Knights hit town for a key Class 4 District 1 matchup. Here comes Austin Barus up the middle. Big hole. He gets stripped up at the 25-yard line. That is an 18-yard gain by the junior running back, Austin Barus, one of the top 10 running backs in the area by yardage. Early going here. He is indeed the coach's son, Mark Barus, in his first season. Back with the Poplar Bluff Mules. Shotgun again. Three wide. Two-step drop. Throws across the middle. That is caught by number 11, Trent Udaley. Late flag on the plate. It may be another face mask at the end of that that was thrown by the back judge. And I think that may be either, that might be the 15-yard variety this time. Another incidental face mask against the Tigers. Wow, they got to clean that up. Man, they got to clean that up. The football now up to the 11-yard line, and that is a first down and a red zone opportunity for the Poplar Bluff Mules. Hold it. We've got a, an official timeout, and looks like it is... Who's that coming off? Is somebody coming off? Maybe an equipment check. In, in the place for the young man who's got his jersey up is Starville Hopkins, the sophomore. Here we go. First and ten. The football is at the 11-yard line. Red zone opportunity. Now, this is a run. This is Mike Griggs, and he is stopped for maybe a, a yard or two by Boreboom. He'll put him at the 10-yard line, second down. Clock is running, 10.55 for the competition. Touchdown runs tonight for Cape Central. Two of them by Christian Cavanis and one each by Jacob Campbell. And by Christopher Martin. All but one have been at least 20 yards or more. Second down at the 10-yard line. This is Griggs again on the carry, and Griggs is stopped behind the line. A pack of Tigers come in on him. The first man in was A.D. Carter, number five. Third down coming up. Football is at the 11 by the original 10-yard marker. Clock is running with 10.09 for the game. Poplar Bluff has to show a sense of urgency here. Third and 10 at the 11-yard line, 9.58. Double receivers on the near side in the three-wide set. Griggs back to pass, three-step drop. Throws across the middle. It is caught. Touchdown. Wow. Great catch that time by Cornelius Timothy. I take that back. That was 39, Brian Hicks. That is indeed Brian Hicks who caught on the 11-yard touchdown catch. It was almost picked off for the sixth time this evening. But to no avail, Hicks gets an 11-yarder, and that now makes it Poplar Bluff with 12 points on the evening. But they're down 28-12. to 12. Now they're going to go for two here. Out of the shotgun formation. This is the carry. This is Griggs. He will get in for the two. So we've got ourselves a two-possession ball game, and Let's see if Cape Central can answer the charge here. 28 to 14 is your score as Poplar Bluff gets their first touchdown run of of the game since Austin Barusa's one yard run back in the first quarter. You gotta believe the onside kick is brewing. With 9.58 to go. Your quick auto trim design reset. 
Cape Central has all three of their timeouts remaining. Two remaining for the Poplar Bluff Mules. Poplar Bluff coming into the ninth game, one and five on the year. Cape Central, four and one on the season. They're undefeated in the Seymour North Conference, which where this game is. They're also undefeated here in two games at Brand New Tiger Stadium. Big test next week against Farmington on October 14th. Broadcast time, 645. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock right here on MABN.net. Here we go. Look for the onside kick if you're central and the hands team already set to go. They could pooch it over the second line of defense. Kicking away will be Colton Manning, and he'll blast this one down the middle right to the hands of Rene Reyes, the junior. That was a baseball catch there. Football at the 39-yard line. A great field position for Cape Central. Let's get you an update from the Southeast South area scoreboard. Farmington now up 50-7 to in the fourth quarter. DeSoto up 21-6 on Windsor at the end of three. Malden 35, Chaffee 25 at the end of three. That looks like another shootout there. St. Genevieve leading Perryville 53-6. to Yee! Meanwhile, handoff this is Mikey Jones. Gets off tackle and blasts right into Austin Goodrich of Poplar Bluff for a short gain. Second down. Clock is running with 9.35, and Cape Central would do good to get nothing but first downs all the way to the house. Personnel in and out. Tate Jenkins coming off the field for a moment. In his place is Luke Hinkabine seeing his first action tonight. Hinkabine the senior. Wing T, slot to the right is Hinkabine. Man in motion is is Campbell. He'll slot, dutch off right tackle, get a stiff arm, first down more. It's a foot race, 40, 30, 20. Good night again. Touchdown, Tigers. Second long touchdown run of the night for Jacob Campbell. It's a 34-14 ball game, and that might have just locked it up. Wow, good running that time by Jacob Campbell. The six foot, 170 pound salt, uh, junior, excuse me. He is making plays this evening. Wow, wow, wow. 8.58 to go here for the game. Again, Kyle Loving on for the extra point. Out of the hold of Cavanis. Here we go. Snap is down. Kick is up. This one, booyah. 35-14, to 14, the Cape Central Tigers putting it on the Poplar Bluff Mules. I'd like to remind you, tonight's contest is brought to you by our friends at Southeast Health. At Southeast Health, the difference is in how you're treated. I'm Alvin Washington, and we are having a ball tonight here at beautiful Tiger Stadium. Where the score right now is the Tigers leading it 35-14. to 14. It is literally almost a no-brainer. Just a reminder, if you want to catch the hottest new sports talk podcast in southeast Missouri, look up my good friends at the regular sports guys. Fun, irreverent, but always factual. That's the regular sports guys. Every Tuesday is a new podcast at the regular sports guys. Dot com. Nothing regular about these Cape Central Tigers. They are putting it on Poplar Bluff, 35-14. to 14. And we're set to go. Calvin Loving and the crew set to kick away as the Tigers go to your right in the black. And boom. It's a high one way back to the 30-yard line, and they will down it. Darren Yump downs the football for Poplar Bluff to give them decent field position. A very special thank you to some folks here that to make tonight's game happen. Dr. Mike Cowan, the principal of Cape Central High School. Athletic Director Lance Tolleson, another great job as always. Also special thanks to our executive producer, Eric the Sage Norman, 
for allowing us to bring you tonight's great action. First and ten. Handoff. This is a big run on for decent yardage that time by Cornelius Timothy. He's been breaking off some big chunks as of late here in the th late third, early fourth quarter. Second down, football at the 37. Clock running with 8.36 for the contest. It looks like slowly but surely some of the fans are starting to leave knowing tonight's game is a rousing success. Again, here's Timothy on the carry and right on top of him, big 57. Martez Carter, the sophomore. Tell you, that class of 2014 is looking solid right now on the football field. Football now at the 36. That's a yard loss on the play. Third down, eight minutes to go in this one. Back to pass is Griggs. Throws down field. Almost intercepted again by Christian Cavanis. Nope, the hand on that one that time was Renee Reyes. That'll bring up fourth down. Boy, the, the secondary of Cape Central has had Poplar Bluff's number all night. Five pickoffs. 7.50 to go, and they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Griggs with double wides. Low snap back to pass. Ball is up. Ball is caught. First down. Nice catch that time by Austin Goodrich to move the sticks. And there was a lot of pressure coming in. Michael Griggs. But he gets the ball off in time. Goodrich with a great catch to the outside. Stops the clock with 7.42. And now it counts at the 43 of the Poplar Bluff Mules. You see there in the white with Maroon. Three wide set. Doubles to the near side this time in a shotgun formation. Low snap. Griggs back to pass. Caffery's coming. Ball's high. Ball is caught by Goodrich. First down and more across midfield to the 45. And Goodrich continues to be the good hands for Poplar Bluff as they try to move the sticks and get back within a two-possession ball game. Just short of the halfway point of the third, fourth and final quarter. 7.22 to go. Cape Central 35, Poplar Bluff 14. Send us your comment. We're back here on MABN.net as we do apologize for technical difficulties. And right out the break, a touchdown pass, a second of the night for... Brian Hicks from the hands of Michael Griggs. That made it 35 to 20. The two-point conversion, however, did fail. That puts us at 35 to 20 with 6.06 to go. Now they received the ensuing onside kick, but they just had a penalty against them. A man in the face. Look out! Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo! Jacob Bar Boom lowers the boom. Ouch! That ought to make Big Brother Zach proud. Holy Cow! Bring that all the way back to the 43 of the Tigers as Jacob Borboom, the sophomore linebacker, just ran clear over Michael Griggs. Four wide set here on fourth and long. He's going to try and go for the end zone. Nope, this is Austin, Austin Baruz, and he'll get tackled. Good open field tackle that time by number five, A.D. Carter, and we have time on the field. 5.20 to go here for the game. It's been pretty much all Cape Central since the opening quarter. Two touchdown runs by one each by Ke Christian Cavanis and by Mikey Jones opened up the scoring. Austin Baruch then came back with a one-yard run to make it at the time 14-6, and that's how the half ended. Two more touchdown runs, two long ones, one each by Christian Cavanis and Christopher Martin, or should I say uh, Jacob Campbell, and that made it 28-6. to Back-to-back -back touchdown throws by Michael Griggs to Brian Hicks. Made it forward in the mix of all of that by a 
Another long touchdown run by Jacob Campbell, and the score is now 35-20. to 20, And now Chris Martin in the backfield just trying to get inside the sticks. No gain, second down. Tonight's contest is brought to you by Southeast Health. At Southeast Health, the difference is in how you're treated. Also in part by Auto Trim Design, 606 South Kings Highway in Cape Girardeau. Clock down to 450 for this one, and Central looking to, to do good to just run this out. Slot to the near side. Wing T man in motion is Campbell. He'll get the call. He's going to come off right tackle again. Big hole first down. More. Is it another foot race? He splits the D down to the 40 yard line of Poplar Bluff. First down. As we roll the beautiful pigskin footage from beautiful Tiger Stadium. 4.33 to go here for this game. Another score here. It'll definitely put Poplar Bluff on ice for another year. Wing T slot to the near side is Luke Hinkbein, number four. Borboom is in the backfield. This is Campbell again off right tackle. Trying to get a uh, some decent gain, about a couple of yards, second down. Sean Sisney on the tackle for Poplar Bluff and Ooh. Jacob Campbell is not looking good right now. Campbell will roll off to the side. <laughs> Looks like he's uh cramping up a little bit, is he? Hobbles off to the sideline. And there's supposed to be number 88, Luke Phillips, the junior wideout. He'll be the man to the near side in a wing T offense. Mikey Jones will take young Mr. Campbell's place. Man in motion is A.D. Carter. A.D. Carter will get the call. Moving to Groovy, shaking and bacon across the 35 near the 30. He'll get stopped at the 33. They'll bring up a third down. Time on the field. And it'll be timeout, Poplar Bluff. That'll be their second timeout. We'll take a short break. Cape Central looking good for potentially their fifth win of the year. 35-20 to 20 against Poplar Bluff. This is MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Back here on MABN.net, third, down and three at the 33 for Cape Central of 35-20 on Poplar Bluff. Man in motion is Mikey Jones. He'll get the call. Coming up right tackle again, will not get the first down. Good brush up the middle. Sisney with the tackle, and this will be the final timeout called by Poplar Bluff to stop the clock at 3-12 for the competition. Those of you just joining us, here's a quick recap of tonight's festivities brought to you by Southeast Health. Earlier tonight, Cape Central got on the board on a one-yard run by Christian Cavanis. One possession later, a 75-yard run by Mikey Jones puts the Tigers up 14-6. In the second quarter, Austin Barus picked up a touchdown. The extra point was no good, making the halftime score 14 to 6. In the third quarter, again, all Cape Central. Touchdown runs by Christian Cavanis and Jacob Campbell, making it 28 to 6. Another Jacob Campbell touchdown run made it 35 to 14. That was after a Brian Hicks touchdown catch. After Campbell's second run, 
Ryan Hicks picked up his second touchdown catch, a long one from Mike Griggs, who has been picked off five times this evening. And that's what makes our score 35-20. to 20. By the way, after that second Michael uh, Brian Hicks re- touchdown reception, the two-point conversion was no good. So that makes this a three-possession ball game with the Tigers. Fourth and three at the 33. With a wing to the left side. Man in motion it is A.D. Carter. This is Cavanis on the run. Cavanis looking for bodyguards, looking for a hole. Doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. Just stopped short of the 30, and that'll be turned over on downs. That ball is turned over on downs. He doesn't have it. That, that is indeed the correct spot. First down for Poplar Bluff, and that's where the Mules are going to have to really get, get on their giddy-up. With 3.05 to go, it is a three-possession ball game. Cape Central 35, Poplar Bluff 20, and immediately the Mules come up to the line. They go again with the shotgun, a three-receiver set, doubles to the near side. Greg's back to pass, across side. He's got Darren Young, shot for a short gain, second down, the football at the 35. They keep the man in bounds. Tackle by Campbell along with Tate Jenkins. The football at the 35. That's a pickup of four. Immediately to the shotgun set again. Throws to the near side. Catch by Goodrich. And it's a first down. Martin with the tackle. Football at the 42. Clock stop with 2.35. Top of the seventh inning. The Cardinals leading the Phillies still 1-0. On your Major League Baseball update. Brought to you by Auto Trim and Design. I tell you, Chris Carpenter is dealing. A first inning score holding up big time. Greg's back to pass. Oh, this one's going to go for Hicks. Too long. Tay Jenkins, the nearest man in the vicinity, and Mike Griggs is like, dude, I need that one. <laughs> that pass to Hicks looks like it's been open all night. Just a little long that time by Mike Griggs who's thrown two beauties to Brian Hicks right down the middle. Here we go. Second and ten at the 42 for Poplar Bluff in the white and maroon. Trying to chop it to this lead. Quick strike across the middle. Goodrich couldn't hang on to it. Third down. Clock is stopped with 2.23 to go for the competition. The Auto Trim Design Post Game Report coming up. We look to talk with Coach Nathan Norman about tonight's game. Another pretty good performance for the kids in black and orange. And maybe momentum heading into their all-important district opener against Farmington next week here at Tiger Stadium. A little bit of soft zone being played. The throw up across the middle. Oh! Christian Cavanis almost gave Tane Jenkins a gift. As he batted the ball away at the midfield line, fourth down. But Christian Cavanis has, has ruled the defensive secondary tonight. He's got two pickoffs and two touchdown runs on offense. 2.18 to go, 35-20. to 20. Tigers leading the Mules. Don't forget, email us if you got any questions, comments, or just want to say hi. Game day at mabn.net. Fourth down, here we go. Back to pass is Griggs. Down the middle, it's up, it's high, it's caught by Goodrich. It is. Is it on the mark or is it a fir- or is it off the mark? Oh, the spot will not give it to him. The spot will not give it to him. First down, Tigers. Wow. Are they going to measure it? Wow, we thought for sure Goodrich had the first down movement. Thought for sure on that one. It was just a great catch on an out on an out pattern. Oh wow. Poplar Bluff gets snake bit. I thought for sure Goodrich had the first down, but to no avail. And a break for Cape Central. 212 remaining, and now all Central can do is just run out the clock. Poplar Bluff can't stop it anymore. 
Austin Goodrich looked like he clearly had the first down made, but the spot of the football was just about a half football short. Boy, when it rains, it pours for the Poplar Bluff Mules. Try as they might. I mean, they've, they've put on a dog tonight. Man in motion on first and ten as Mikey Jones will get the call. Going up again off right tackle. Short gain at the midfield stripe. Second down. And the clock runs. And runs definitely in favor of what will now be a 5-1 and one record. 3-0 and oh at New Tiger Stadium. More importantly, 2-0 and oh in the SEMO North Conference with the showdown against Farmington right back here at Tiger Stadium next Friday night. And that is going to be worth the price of admission. Wing T slot left again for Cape Central with a minute 38 to go. A.D. Carter in motion. He'll get the call. Trying to come up left tackle. Goes back up the middle. And that's it. Maybe a yard gain. Third down. Clock is running with a minute 27. Your Southeast Health player of the game for tonight. No doubt it's the man at quarterback. Number eight, Christian Cavanis of the Cape Central Tigers. He has indeed Put in work tonight with two touchdown runs and two interceptions. We look to hopefully talk with that young man as well as Coach Nathan Norman once this contest does indeed come to a conclusion. We now near the auto trim design final minute. It's right here. Wing teeth slot to the near side. A man in motion again. This, this is a play action. Cavanis flings it up. Whoa. We were looking for Jacob Boraboom, but way, way off mark. Jake Pullum, the most closest man to that football for Poplar Bluff. Now to bring him fourth down. Clock is stopped with 52.1 left. A first down here will call it a night for the Mules. And Cavanis is out to punt. And timeout is called. A bit of confusion on the part of maybe Cape Central. We'll take a break here. Central up 35-20 on Poplar Bluff on MAPN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Back here on MAPN.net, fourth and six at the 48, and they're going to punt this one. It's a short one. It's high. Takes a slight bounce and will be downed at the 28-yard line. First and 10 with 43.8 remaining. At Poplar Bluff, the way they've been moving the football, they might be able to get a touchdown here, but too little, too late possibly. Cardinals right now again leading the Phillies. This is in the top of the seventh. One to nothing. That's game five of the National League Divisional Series. Whoever wins that game will face off against Milwaukee. And we understand Ryan Howard is now up to bat, so things could change with one swing. We'll keep you updated as our broadcast wears on. Michael Grace for Poplar Bluff rolling out to his right on first and ten. Looking, looking, downfield he throws. And well and complete, second down. 35.8 remains in this contest. Cape Central up 35 to 20. On Poplar Bluff. Barring some really unforeseen wildness, Central will improve to 5-1 and one overall. 3-0 and oh at New Tiger Stadium. 
2-0 and in the SEMO North Conference. The throw to the outside is up. It's high. It's caught. It's a f- incomplete. Christopher Martin knocks the football out of the hands of Darren Yount before he can get decent possession. 30.6 remains. Third down. Again, your Southeast South player of the game tonight is Christian Cavanis of the Cape Central Tigers. Two touchdown runs on offense, two pickoffs on defense. He literally has been a one-man gang tonight. Third and 10 into 29 with 30.6 remaining. The shotgun formation doubles to the near side. Back to pass is Griggs. Rush is coming. The throw, it looked like it was hit for a minute. Ball tipped in the air and almost caught. A hand on that one by... Looks like it was, it was Jacob Margetta, the, the junior linebacker, who tipped it in the air. Darren Young almost came down with it. It's fourth down. 25.2 seconds left. This is the ball game for Poplar Bluff. They have no timeouts. Hand up the middle of this is Austin Barus, and that's it. 30-yard line, 21.3 seconds left, and Cape Central will walk away with their fifth win of the year. By the way, top of the eighth inning, Cardinals still up, one to nothing. As that game goes final, we will give you the information and how the NLCS stacks up. Right now, football is at the 31-yard line, and it will be a victory formation for the Cape Central Tigers, who are perfect in Tiger Stadium history. Victory formation it is. Christian Cavanis, our player of the game, under center. And, well, he should. That's the ball game. That is it. The Cape Central Tigers held off a late push by Poplar Bluff, but the timely running of Christian Cavanis and company and some great defense in the secondary. Puts this one on ice as your final from right here at Tiger Stadium. Cape Central wins it 35 to 20 over Poplar Bluff. Let us know how you feel about the game. Hit us up on the email. Game day at MABN.net. Again, game day at MABN.net. The Auto Trim Design Post Game Report comes on the other side of this message. You're watching Southeast Missouri High School Football on Mid-America Sports, the new MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. The magical thing about using energy wisely is that anyone can do it. Turn off lights. Use energy-saving light bulbs. And... Turn off computers and game systems when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Grab a grown-up and go online to energy.gov slash kids. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit theshelterpetproject.org. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? Do you sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. Thank you.
the results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Presented by Southeast Health. There is a place where there are no lockouts, holdouts, or diva receivers. Where a hometown hero is made every Friday night. Where every athlete plays for the love of the game. Where the fans are more dedicated than anywhere else. Southeast Missouri's best rivalries play here. Mid America Sports. M A B N. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need. When you need it the most, there is a difference. 
Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. We're back here on MABN.net, Mid-America Sports Final from right here at beautiful Tiger Stadium. The score, 35-20. to 20. The Cape Central Tigers knock off the Poplar Bluff Mules. This is the Auto Trim Design Post Game Report. I'm Alvin Washington. With me to my left, your right, is our Southeast Health player of the game, Christian Cavanis. What a great night for the young man. Two touchdown runs, two interceptions, and he joins us right now. Christian, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I, I got to tell you, those those first couple of interceptions look real nice there at center field. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it felt good. I mean, I haven't played this since I was a sophomore, and, you know, just being back out there and playing defense, you just get to fly around, and I was I was happy that I got the chance to do that tonight. What did the loss to St. Charles West on the, on the road do to you guys during the, the week break? I mean, it, it really put us back to reality, you know. We were going 4-0. and We thought that nothing could really stop us. But, you know, whenever you get that first loss, it kind of it checks you back down, and you got to really push through that. And I think we did a very good job of doing that this week. You know, you had a, a pretty good popular bluff team that, despite its now 1-6 and record, you know, easily could have made this a ball game of things. But five big pickoffs, two by you, uh, one each by Tay Jenkins, uh, Chris Martin, and one other person. And, you know, the the secondary tonight really did an outstanding job. Oh, yeah. we I mean, in practice, we, we go over their routes all the time. We know when they're going to break, and we know when we can break. And we always we always do that tip drill thing. So, you know, we, we did a very good job of just breaking, watching our receiver that we were supposed to have and covering our zone. This now sets up an all-important final SEMO North Conference game, or should I say it's next to last conference game, because you have Farmington right here next Friday night. It's also your first district game, and you definitely want to get that one in the win column. And you all to know, remember last year's shootout up in Farmington. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, was, that last year's was a big game. It was close the whole way, and I expect it to be that same way this year. We're both very good teams. You know, they have the – I believe we're just one win behind them because of that off week. But they're a very good team, and they, they do that no-huddle offense that's hard to keep up with. So, I mean, if we – keep up with that. I believe that we can handle them. And you know, it, last year around that time, you came in having gotten the school's first state ranking in quite some time, so there was a little bit of pressure on that. Uh, and you had Zach Hibbets uh, in the mix. Now you've got the kid Busenberg. Uh, you don't quite have the pressure of a state ranked team, but you still do have the pressure of trying to get that first good win in the district playoffs. Oh, yeah. I mean, us not being ranked, I mean, I, I take that as something good. You know, it doesn't get our players' heads too big. You know, it makes us want to push that much harder to beat them. And with them having that new sophomore quarterback up there, I mean, he's just as good as Hibbets was last year. So, I mean, we really got to contain him and make him a minimum amount of yards on us next week. Talk about the contributions tonight of Mikey Jones and Jacob Campbell, the the, the kids who are junior and sophomore. Just, just lighten up the scoreboard with long touchdown runs. Oh, Mikey's a powerful kid. I mean, once he lowers his shoulder, there's not many people that, out there that can tackle him. He's quick, too, and Jacob's the same way. If he gets his shoulders down, there's not many people that are going to be able to tackle him. And once he gets out in the open, it's hard to tackle him out there, too, because he's just so quick. Our special thanks to Christian Cavanis of Cape Central High School. He is our Southeast Health player of the game with two touchdown runs and two interceptions on defense as he helps the Cape Central Tigers knock off. The uh, Poplar Bluff Mules, the final, 35-20. to 20. Don't forget, talk about tonight's game on the Internet through our email address, gameday at mabn.net. Also, the Varsity Club forum is open at mabn.net. Just look for the forum link and talk about tonight's game. Thank you very much, young man. Thank we'll you. see you next week right here against the Farmington Black Knights. Sounds good. We'll take another break and we'll wrap things up.
Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to Coach Nathan Norman before our festivities is done. Again, the final, Cape Central 35, popular above 20. Another Cape Central winner, 5-1 and one winner on MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. The magical thing about using energy wisely is that anyone can do it. Turn off lights. Use energy-saving light bulbs. And turn off computers and game systems when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Grab a grown-up and go online to energy.gov slash kids. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? You sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. In a, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. The most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Presented by Southeast Health. There was a and we're back here on MABN.net. Again, let you see the final there, 35-20. to 20. The Cape Central Tigers knock off the Poplar Bluff Mules. I'm Alvin of Washington back here at Tigers Stadium. We're awaiting the arrival of Coach Nathan Norman of the Central Tigers for his take on tonight's competition. Let's take a look at some of the action uh, from across the area. Some finals in the mix. Uh, Malden holds off Chaffee in the SEMO South. That was an important game for Chaffee to try and uh, get some positioning. The final there, 49-25. to 25. Carruthersville at the end of third, a dogfight with Dexter, 41-40. to 40. Sykeston has now earned its program's 600th win, 56 to nothing over the Kennett Indians. Congratulations. Haytai is leading Scott City at the end of 30-17. That is for number one in the SEMO South Conference. Literally, the conference championship is on the line there. 
Charleston has knocked off Herculaneum 34 to 28. Farmington, uh, no problem with Jackson, 50 to 14. St. Genevieve crushes Perryville, sending them to their third straight defeat, the final 72 to 6. Here's the big story in the National League Divisional Series. They've gone to the top of the ninth. Chris Carpenter is still pitching, and it's a one nothing ball game in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals over the Philadelphia Phillies. Skip Schumacher with the lone RBI back in the first inning. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with Coach Nathan Norman after this one-minute timeout. This is Southeast Missouri High School Football on MABN.net. Results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Back here on MABN.net, the final from Tiger Stadium. Cape Central knocks off Poplar Bluff 35-20. to I'm Alvin Washington, now joined by the man who makes it happen for Cape Central each and every night. He is the head coach, Nathan Norman. Coach, welcome back. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. I, I tell you, a wild night to say the least, a very offensive night. But tonight... The kids came up dealing, bouncing back from last week's loss at St. Charles West. They did. I was real proud of the way we responded, and, and uh, we really got off to a fast start. That was uh, uh, unusual for us, and I was happy to see that. And I was hoping we were going to really keep that rolling. But we kind of let them back in it there at the, in the middle and uh, ended up, uh, you know, not being a real close game, but a little closer than I, I, I wanted it to be. And you really have to hand it to your senior quarterback, uh, Christian Cavan is our player of the game who wound up with two touchdowns on offense and two interceptions on defense. Playing both sides of the football for the first time, I think, in a good minute. He really gets himself into the midst of the game. He does. You know, he he didn't miss a beat on offense because of his defensive play, and, and I kind of anticipated that. He He's a he's a very smart football player. He's a senior. He's a good leader. And uh, as you can see tonight, he was our most passionate defensive player. He played with great emotion and came up and flew up to the ball, made some good tackles. So he's going to have to play there the rest of the year for us to be successful. As a unit, I believe they picked off the ball four times from Michael Griggs, and that really foretold the fortune because this could have easily been a popular bluff victory had those four picks not happened. That's right. That's right. Our defense is very opportunistic, and they, they picked the ball off, and they did a good job. And That's what you have to do and if you want to win. District play coming up next week. Class 4, District 1, it gets going with Farmington. That's also a SEMO North Conference game. So you're two up in the win column in the conference, but now it's all for keeps. The opportunity for a second consecutive state playoff berth. And you, you start with the Black Knights. Granted, they don't have Zach Kibbis. They do have the, Bu- the Bustenberg kid. They do have most of that backfield back. They do have most of that linebacker core back. Momentum tonight from tonight's game? No doubt, you know, no doubt this was huge for us to get a little momentum rolling again. Papa Bluff's a very good, I'm sorry, uh, Farmington's a very good football team, and we have our work cut out for us. They're they, uh, they're all-around football team, and, and we'll have to play well, but tonight was a, a good start. Looking at some of the other sophomores that made things happen tonight, especially Jacob Borboom with some three timely 
possession-keeping catches uh, that went for at least 10 yards or more, and he's starting to really get himself in the flow of the game. Yeah, he did. He, he's a smart football player as well. He grew up around football, and that helps. Uh, his dad's a football coach, and, and you always like to co- coach a kid whose dad's in football because they understand the game, and he's like that. He, he's just around the football, and that's a good thing to have. Speaking of kids in football, Austin Barus, who is Mark Barus's kid, the first-year coach at Poplar Bluff, your impression of the very speedy and heady back? Hey, he's tough to tackle, a little strong, little back, uh, plays hard, plays hard, good back. Well, the kids, the black and orange, would played the hardest tonight, and it showed in a 35-20 to victory over the Poplar Bluff Mules. Our special thanks, as always, to Nathan Norman of Cape Central Catches Coaches Show every Monday right here on MAB and Dinette. Coach, thank you very much. And thank you. Hopefully we can will the Cardinals to a, an NLDS win here. That's right. That's right. We started. Hopefully they'll finish it. We will keep you up to date in just a little bit. Plus, scores from across the heartland in football. Again, the final here. It's the important number. Cape 35, Poplar Bluff 20, Cape Central now 5-1 and one on the year, 3-0 and oh here at Tiger Stadium, and 2-0 and oh in the SEMO North. You're watching Southeast Missouri High School Football on the new MABN.net. The results are in. There is a difference in attitude at Southeast Health. You'll find it in a friendly smile, in a pleasant voice, in a helping hand, and in a warm heart. But most importantly, you'll find it in your time of need, when you need it the most. There is a difference. Southeast Health. The difference is how you're treated. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone. But you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community. Get the resources you need and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org. We've got your back. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Back here on MABN.net, Mid America Sports Final again, Cape 35, Poplar Bluff 20, Alvin Washington here on the Auto Trend Design Pulse Game Report. Don't forget to give us an email, let us know how you like the game tonight. Game day at MABN.net. Again, game day at MABN.net. Let's take a look at some other scores across the heartland. A comeback for the Dexter Bearcats. They knock off state ranked Carruthersville in a shootout 56 to 55. Carruthersville had fourth and 10 through the football, picked off by Dexter, and that is the ball game. Other scores across the heartland from Tuesday night. St. Vincent takes out Grandview of Hillsboro, 35 to 20. Portageville was leading East Prairie at the half, 26 to 20. Now it's up. Uh, it's a final now. Uh, Portageville knocks off East Prairie, 46 to 38. That is a final. Also a final in the Semo South. Malden holds off Chaffee, 49 to 25. Sykeston gets their program's 600th win of the year, 56 to nothing over Kennett. Haytai end of the third. It was 30 to 17. Haytai leading Scott City. This one also final. A few other finals: Charleston 34, Herculaneum 28, Farmington 50, Jackson 14, and Saint Genevieve crushing Perryville 72 to six. Let's get you an update again from the NLDS. And right now in the ninth inning, it is still St. Louis winning nothing over Philadelphia. They are going to the bottom of the ninth now. And Carpenter is still on the mound, but he's facing some tough folks. Chase Utley, Hunter Pence, and Ryan Howard in that order. Uh, And right now, uh, Utley starts the inning. Uh, Chris Carpenter has scattered some three hits and has struck out three 
uh, Philadelphia batters tonight. Philadelphia has also committed two errors, so hopefully for you Cardinals fans out there, the Cardinals can hang on for the win. Should they win, they'll travel to Milwaukee on Sunday for the start of the NLCS. If Philadelphia, you know, heaven forbid, happens to come back and win against St. Louis, then Milwaukee travels to Philadelphia for game one of the NLDS. Speaking of Milwaukee, they needed 10 innings to oust Arizona that final 3-2. to two. The important number here, the final once again, 35 to 20. Cape Central knocks off the kids from Poplar Bluff. That final is 35 to 20. We do like to thank a lot of the folks that made this happen tonight. First and foremost is our executive producer, Eric Norman, the sage from the Regular Sports Guys. Catch them every Tuesday with a new podcast at theregularsportsguys.com. Our coordinating producer and marketing director is Anthony Sinks. Our field side producer is Elliot Sterling. Hope your kid gets well soon. Thanks to our camera guys, Adam Pavelka and Charlie Shane. Also, a very special thanks to our great friends here at Cape Central High School, Dr. Mike Callen, the principal, Lance Tollison, the athletic director. You've been watching a presentation of Mid-America Sports, copyright 2011. For more, go online at M-A-B-N. Dot net. Again, the final score from right here at beautiful Cape Central High School. Tiger Stadium sees another Cape Central winner, 35-20. to 20. Until next week when we see the farming tonight right here at Tiger Stadium against the Cape Central Tigers. Good night from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And take care, everybody.